Today we're going to go through fatigue model development. Uh, fatigue is often a critical loading condition, especially in the aerospace and defense industry. So you got to look at it. You know, if you're looking at fatigue of fasteners, fatigue of the materials due to vibration, it's very important. So I'm going to break it down as easily as I can. Um, really, there's two classes of fatigue models. There's the unnotched models, which include the Gerber parabola, the Soderberg model, and the Goodman model. These models do not take into account stress concentration factors. Therefore, they're not really applicable to industry, but it's important to understand where to start from. And then there's your notched fatigue models, which do take into account stress concentration factors. This includes your modified Gerber parabola, your gun model, and your modified Goodman model, which we're going to step through Excel and learn how to develop today. So to the left, you can see that we have our unnotched specimens up here. Our fatigue lines are a lot higher, and usually the fatigue models, what they do is they start at your endurance limit, and then they go either intersect the yield strength or the ultimate strength, depending on what model you use. But these are your unnotched specimens, and then your notched, which take into account stress concentration factors, they come down a lot lower because you're actually reducing your um, your life by a uh, stress concentration factor. It can be a fatigue stress concentration factor or a geometric stress concentration factor. So before we go develop the modified Goodman model in Excel, let's just kind of look at the major components of how to develop it. So you have your alternating stress versus your mean stress graphed. And you can see you're just drawing a line from your endurance limit divided by a fatigue stress concentration factor all the way to your ultimate strength. It's just described by this equation, which is important for programming applications. But your fatigue stress concentration factor is um, calculated with this equation. It includes your geometric stress concentration factor and a notch sensitivity factor, which you look up in tables depending on uh, the geometry of the material and the material itself. And then also to make this a modified Goodman model, we actually draw a yield line um, right here. So you're looking at two lines. The yield line goes from the yield strength of the material to the yield strength of the material on both axes. And it's described by this equation. And then so essentially if your operating point falls below these lines right here, you're good. And you can calculate a margin of safety simply by taking the distance AC or the length from the origin A to C divided by the length to your operating point from the origin AB and then subtracting by one to get a margin of safety. So that kind of describes the terminology. Let's go ahead and go into Excel and show how to do this. So before we develop this modified Goodman model, I'm just going to say that we're going to continue on from the SN curve we developed for our aluminum in a previous video. The only thing we're adding here is rows for a geometric stress concentration factor, a notch sensitivity factor, and then an operating point which plots basically values on a uh, alternating stress versus mean stress plot. So I'm just going to put in random values here for now. Um, Let's just say our mean stress is 5,000 pounds and our alternating stress is 2,000. So to develop this modified Goodman model, the first thing you want to do is determine your fatigue stress concentration factor. You'll look up these values um, up here, this geometric stress concentration factor and not sensitivity factor in tables, but uh, I'm just going to assume they're going to be um, one for the uh, this value to be one and this value to be 0.8 for now just to get through this so here's our equation so um, we're gonna go ahead and type it in and um, times are not sensitivity factor so that's our value came out to be a value of one um, now we're going to plot our modified Goodman line on our 
mean stress versus alternating stress curve. And then if you recall, this is what it looks like. The blue line is our modified Goodman line. You're going to plot your endurance limit divided by our fatigue stress concentration factor. You're going to plot that point, and then you're going to plot the point on the x-axis, which is going to be basically our ultimate strength of our material, in this case the ultimate strength of aluminum. So our x-intercept is going to be the ultimate strength of aluminum, which is up here, 42,000. And our alternating stress is zero at that point. And then our y-intercept is going to be um, have a zero mean stress. And it's going to be our endurance limit, corrected endurance limit, divided by our stress concentration factor, or fatigue stress concentration factor. And see, I've already pre-plotted these. You can see there's our line right here. Now we have to plot our yield line. It takes two points as well. It's just going to be it's going to be intercepts at our yield strength for the y and x axis. So for the x axis, let's see, we're going to plot our yield strength, and then the alternating stress is going to be zero, and then the mean stress is going to be zero for our y intercept. And it's going to be our yield strength for our alternating stress. And so here's our resultant plot right here. And here's our operating point right here that we plotted. Now we have to calculate a margin of safety. So we start at the origin and we just, whichever line we hit, whichever line. Uh, I'll show you how it's calculated in Excel VBA, but we just take the distance from the origin to the line, the first line, and then the distance from the origin to our operating point, and we uh, calculate a margin of safety. I wrote a VBA function for that. It's called modified Goodman MS. It's going to take essentially our operating point value, so our mean stress is 5,000. Our alternating stress is 2,000 for our operating point. The ultimate strength of the material, the yield strength, and then it's going to take basically our endurance limit divided by our fatigue stress concentration factor, which we determined right here. And it calculates a margin of safety to be 2.972. So that's all it's doing. This exact process shown right here. And we can just, uh, it's easy now, we can go to our finite element software, get our values, and pl plug them in, and um, get an answer. And it's real fast and easy. You can see how our operating point right here changes when we change those values, and it calculates a margin of safety for us. So let's go ahead and step into the Excel VBA code to see how the margin of safety was calculated using this methodology um, right here. So let's do that. So this is the function that was used to calculate the margin of safety. And so to give you a little bit of background of how that's done, look at this diagram right here. Essentially what you have, you have two situations. You could either intersect your yield line, that could be your minimum margin of safety, or your modified Goodman line. So you have to do two calculations. In the first calculation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to um, basically calculate the margin of safety for the yield line using matrix math. So I define essentially this yield line equation is given by this right here. It's a linear equation. And then the line going through the operating point is given by this equation. You know, it's just a linear equation that goes to the origin with an intercept of zero. So you have two linear equations. You can put them in matrix form as shown here. And then you can essentially take the inverse of this, multiply it by B, and you get your intersection point. So that's what I'm going to show in the code, how to do this, put it in this form. 
So if you, the goal is to calculate an intersection point between these two lines, the yield line and the point going through the operating point, and then essentially calculating the distances AB and AC, and then determining that ratio, subtracting one to get a margin of safety. So I'm going to do essentially you have to do this calculation for both cases for the modified Goodman line and the yield line because you don't know which one is going to hit um, so let's just step through the code how that's done um, so these are the variables defined um, in the function your operating point sigma mean sigma alt and then your ultimate stress your yield stress and your endurance stress or your your uh, stress shown here which is your endurance stress divided by your fatigue stress concentration factor so the first step is to define our array if we define our array this is the same thing as defining this right here okay and essentially what we do next is we define B which is defined here And then we take the inverse of that to basically determine the intersection point right here on this line. Once you do that, you matrix multiply to get your intersection points. And then you calculate the distance AB and AC. You take that ratio you subtract one and you get your margin of safety for the case that you hit your yield line okay so we do that for any case here uh, we're just trying to find the minimum margin of safety so for the case for the modified Goodman line they have equations in textbooks so that's what I used here um, this is the equation right here you can find it in uh, Norton's book on um, mechanical components they give it to you so I took advantage of it okay and then you just apply your margin of safety equation and then what you do next is you look at both margins and you take the minimum and uh, that's gonna be your margin of safety and then the distance function that's just uh, Pythagorean theorem um, you know stuff you learned in high school so that's how it was done. There's many ways to skin this cat. Uh, this is one way to do it. And plus, you got to see uh, matrices applied in Excel VBA, which is always useful uh, to know how to do that. So, um, yeah, that's all I got today. So, I'll see you next time. Adios.